welcome to our session on sequential circuits, including D-latches and D-flip-flops. Latches and flip-flops are typically described in a number of different ways. One is a visual symbol, which indicates all of the inputs, the outputs, and control signals into the latch or flip-flop. The functional truth table is an abbreviated version of the complete truth table, and describes the function or what the latch or flip-flop does for every possible input combination. In contrast, the complete truth table describes the next state of the outputs, not only for all possible combinations of the inputs, but for all possible present states of the outputs. The implementation of a latch or flip-flop is done with digital logic gates that we've discussed in previous sessions, including AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, and XNOR gates. And finally, a latch or flip-flop is described by its triggering state. And that's the condition of the clock or the control signal that prompts the latch or the flip-flop to perform its function and to generate a next state of the outputs. And for latches, we have positive and negative level triggered latches. And for flip-flops, we have leading edge and trailing edge triggered flip-flops. Let's take a look at an example now of a latch or flip-flop and all the symbols and functions of that latch. The D-latch is the simplest latch or flip-flop we have available to us and makes a perfect starting point for describing latches and flip-flops through and through. The symbol for the D-latch is shown here in the upper left of this slide. The D-latch has one input, D. It has two outputs, but they're dependent on one another. The main output, Q, and its inverse here, Q0 and the control signal, which is labeled here as clock or E. Now the label for the control signal is pretty irrelevant, but the typical labels are clock or enable and abbreviated as E. The fact that there's no symbol here at the input to the D-latch implies that the clock or enable signal, the control signal for the latch, is effectively active high. So this is a positive level triggered device or latch meaning that the outputs Q and Q0 can only change when the clock is in the high state. The D-latch is described by its functional truth table, and there are two possible states of the control signal. The clock or enable signal, which we've simply abbreviated as E here, can either have a state of 0 or 1. When the enable signal is zero, since this is a positive level triggered latch, that means that the outputs will do nothing and they will hold its present state, the latch's present state. In other words, Q and Q0 will remain constant. And when the enable signal is equal to one, the function of the D-latch will be simply to transfer the input D to the output Q. So then the output Q will become D, and the output Q0 will become D0. We can look at a more detailed example of the truth table and the complete truth table, which not only considers just all possible combinations of the input, but all combinations of the present state. And we're going to look at the corresponding next state. So this complete truth table usually implies that what's happening here is occurring when the clock is high in this case. In other words, when the control signal is active. So let's take a look at what's going on here. When the clock is high, we know that the present state is transformed into whatever the input state is, in this case D. So regardless of what the present state is, the next state will be identical to what D is offering to the D-latch. Q will just become D in this truth table. And Q0 is dependent on Q, so it just becomes the opposite of D. Now in the previous truth table, the functional truth table, we noted that when enable is zero, we're just in a hold state. So these next states would be identical 
to the present states. But when the enable signal is 1, that's when we get this detailed truth table that we've shown here. And Q just becomes D, and Q0 becomes the inverse of D in that situation. Now the timing diagram allows us to describe this behavior visually. And what we see here is that in the positive level triggered D-latch, whenever the clock signal is high, the input D is going to be mirrored or transferred to the output Q. And that only occurs when the clock is high. So it's important to remember when looking at a latch to ask, is it positive or negative level triggered? And in the D latch, when the clock is high, the output Q will just mirror the input D. And when the clock is low, it will just Q, the output will just retain its last known value. In this case here, on the first, when the clock drops, Q is equal to zero, and it will hold that value until the clock changes again. So now let's take a look at an implementation of the D-latch. This implementation uses two AND gates and two NOR gates. And we're going to look at all possible input combinations and what happens in those input combination scenarios. But let's first point out here that there's feedback in the circuit. Q is fed back to the input of NOR2, and the inverse of Q is fed back to the input of NOR1. And that's what makes this latch and able to store memory in the circuit, is the fact that we do have feedback from the present outputs to the inputs of some of the gates in the implementation. Now keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and look at how this latch works. Let's first look at the condition when E is equal to 0, which makes one of the inputs to each AND gate 0. And by definition, an AND gate produces a 1 at the output only when the two inputs are 1. So we know that the output of both of these AND gates has to be 0. Now coming into the NOR gate, when there's an input to a NOR gate that's 0, the output of the NOR gate is exclusively determined by the other input. And that's because the NOR function allows the inputs to change to 1 only when both of the inputs are 0 and produces a 0 otherwise. So in the two cases where one of the inputs is 0, as is shown here, what we see is that the output of the NOR gate is just the inverse of the remaining input. So that means in NOR1 that Q0 is fed back as the other input and that the output will be the inverse of Q0 or just Q. And likewise on NOR2, since int2 is equal to 0, one of the inputs is 0, the output of that NOR gate will be the inverse of the remaining input Q and the output by definition of the NOR function will be Q0. Excuse me for the boo-boo here. This is just Q, or the inverse of Q0 at the input to OR1. So what we see here is that Q and Q0 just remain constant because of the fact that the output of the NOR gate is exclusively determined by the other input, or the fed fed back inputs Q and Q0 into those NOR gates. When we look at that in the complete truth table, we see that when enable is 0, regardless of what the inputs are, D, the outputs hold their present state. So the next state is simply equal to the present state. And that's our hold condition that we saw in the functional truth table for the D-latch. Now we still have four remaining rows in the truth table to consider, so let's look at the next possible combination. Now let's look at the situation when E equals 1. When E equals 1, now we have a situation where the output of the AND gates can indeed go high, 
And in AND1, if D is equal to 0, the output of the AND gate indeed does go high, and the other AND gate has to go low because both of the inputs are not 1. So in this case here, when the input to a NOR gate, when there's at least one input to a NOR gate that's equal to 1, we know by definition the output is going to be 0. By definition of the NOR function, when one of the inputs is 1, the output will automatically be 0. Now we can look at how this affects the feedback to the second NOR gate, because now we have 0 or near 0, NOR 0, which produces a 1 at the output, and we see that Q goes low while Q0 goes high. So what we see here is when D equals 0, Q mirrors D and becomes 0 or goes low itself, and Q0 becomes the inverse of D, or 1. In the truth table, that means that when the enable signal is now high, and the incoming D is 0, that the next state, or the next set of outputs for Q, will be 0, regardless of what the previous state was, and the inverse of Q, Q0, will be 1, regardless of what the present or previous state was. The last input combination we have to consider is when E equals 1 and D equals 1. In this case, the inputs to both terminals of AND2 are 1, and the corresponding output is 1. On the other AND gate, D0 is now equal to 0, and the output of the AND gate is 0. If we look now at NOR2, whenever an input to a NOR gate is 1, the output is automatically 0, which causes Q0 to go low. And now at the other NOR gate, we have 0, NOR0, zero, which gives us a 1 at the output, and the output Q goes high. And that completes our truth table for the D-latch. In the scenario when enable is now high, when the D-latch is active, and D is equal to 1, the next state of the outputs are equal to D, or equal to 1, at Q, regardless of what's going on in the present state of the input outputs. And Q0 is just the inverse of Q. So putting it all together, this is the complete truth table for the D-latch. It considers all possible combinations of the input, the control signals, and the present state of the outputs Q and Q0. Now making a D flip-flop out of a D-latch is surprisingly easy once we know how to implement the D-latch. And the D flip-flop works as follows. This first D-latch here is positive edge triggered. That means, or positive level triggered, excuse me. That means the output Q is going to change when this clock is high. But on the second latch, we see that we've inverted the clock. And now the second latch will change its output only when the clock is low. And the overlap between the two, clock being high and clock being low, means that the output, final outputs Q and Q0 will only change when the clock goes from high to low. During the high state of the clock, this D latch will transfer D to Q. And during the low state, the second D latch on the right will transfer D to Q. So the first availability of the final output Q will occur right as the clock goes from high to low. So you'll see that the, func the complete truth table here is identical to that for the D latch. But the only exception is that now instead of being positive level triggered, as was the case in the D latch example, this D flip-flop is trailing edge triggered. And that's how the D flip-flop is made with D latches. And it's very common to make flip-flops out of their corresponding latches using this kind of configuration. So what we looked at today are D latches and D flip-flops from their symbol all the way down to their implementation.
Their function is simply to hold or store the input to the latch until the clock either changes state or triggers to a different level. A positive level triggered D-latch does its job when the clock is low. That means it holds that function when the clock is low and transfers D to the output when the clock is high. And the opposite is true for a negative level triggered flip-flop, triggered D-latch. For flip-flops, a positive edge or leading edge triggered D-flip-flop means that the input is stored at all times except when the clock is going from low to high, and vice versa for a negative edge or trailing edge triggered flip-flop. That's all for D-latches and D-flip-flops today. Thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the world of digital logic and circuits, and we hope you'll join us again soon.